Hi, Memorial Park family. I just wanted to take a quick moment to let you know what's coming up this week. We're digging deeper into our prayer series with a 24-hour prayer vigil this weekend from Friday morning to Saturday morning. We need you to pray with us. Sign up for a slot on the website at mympcepc.org events or find the event on our mobile app. One of our favorite community outreach events also happens this week, Twilight Night. This evening performance on February 2nd and 3rd is a preview of the high school musical season. If you haven't snagged a free ticket yet, be sure to get one soon. You'll get early access to the event for prime seating and be entered for a chance to win two tickets to a show in the cultural district. Find the event on our mobile app. You can always find out more about our upcoming events on our mobile app or snag a calendar in the welcome area. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. 
Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, trombones. I think there's like 22, 23 up here. It's, it's really powerful. Thank you for coming, and thank you for being here. If you walked in and hear those uh, trombones, did I say trumpets? Trombones, yeah, I think I know my musical instruments. Um, do you feel royal? Do you feel regal? Do you feel like you matter? Do you feel like you're important? And you are because you just walked into the kingdom of God. And you are God's people. And you are special people. And you are loved here. And we're so glad that you're here to worship God uh, today. My name is Kevin Gorley. I'm one of the uh, pastors here, minister of uh, congregational care. And it's really important that we know who is here, especially any visitors. If you find this worship attendance card, you can take it. You can take your phone and go on the QR, which is quick response. And we want to be in touch with you. And we want to thank you over and over for coming. And we pray that you might come back and worship God. The Holy Spirit has been powerful here uh, this morning. I was in the first service. It's great to see all of you in the second service. The Holy Spirit is, is moving here this morning. And He's moving through the praise of God's people, through the preaching of God's Word, and through our prayers. And our prayers is that you and I would open our hearts and minds to the work of the Holy Spirit in us this morning. God really wants to work in each one of us, and we just need to yield to Him. So my prayer is that we would all yield to Him this morning and be aware of His presence. And uh, we're going to begin by doing that, by standing and praising God together. Let's do that. This song is a heart's cry to see God in this place, including some words from Scripture from Isaiah and Moses. Day. We're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. Because you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. So open up the head. Your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. You're sending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, so Lord, unveil our eyes. Yes, Lord, because you're the reason we're here. your glory show us show us your power show us show us your glory Lord 
within me. Bless his holy name. Let's sing Psalm 103 together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. I sing like never before, oh my soul, Lord, I worship your sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, Lord I worship your holy name. Your Draws me. 
morning, church. Uh, Would you join me in this prayer from Psalm 65? Let's pray together. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you, all people will come. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. Lord, we are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. Lord, you care for the land and you water it. You enrich it abundantly. Your streams are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless it with crops. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. And they shout for joy and sing. Lord, you are our provider. You give us good things. You provide for our needs, Lord. And we are grateful for that. We are grateful, God, that you are a God, not of scarcity, but you are a God of abundance, who eagerly blesses his people. And our only response to that, Lord, as the psalmist writes, is that we shout for joy and we sing. We love you, Lord, and we pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. And you can all be seated. Uh, yesterday, uh, I had the privilege and honor of uh, sitting in on a, one of our programs here at the church uh, called Anchored, and it's a program for our fourth and fifth grade boys, and for, their, for the boys and their dads, and across the way over here, there, there was another program going on called Created in Love, which was for our fourth and fifth grade girls and their mothers, and you know, I got to sit in, like I said, on the Anchored program, and it was, man, it's just such a blessing to see fathers and sons coming together, having important conversations. You know, those moments, those ministries, those programs, they're only possible because of your faithful giving and generosity. And so through your tithes and your offerings, we can glorify God through our ministries here at the church, just like all the things that happened yesterday. And we remember that God provides for us so abundantly, and he does that so that we can provide for others who are in need. We can see God's goodness on full display in all that we do. So I just want to say this morning, thank you. Thank you for giving. Uh, Gifts today, givings today can be placed in the offering basket or you can give online or through our mobile app. And so let me just say a quick prayer for this offering. Lord, once again, as, as we give, God, we remember how much you have given to us. We remember your faithfulness to us. We remember your generosity generosity towards us. And may that, Lord, stir up in our hearts so that we may be cheerful givers as we give towards the building and the expanse of your kingdom here on earth. We pray this in your son's name. 
Amen. Pray then. Pray then. Pray then. Like this. Like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, good morning, church. Thank you for being here. If you're online with us, thank you for being with us online. Uh, you matter. Uh, we're glad to have you and to welcome you to our services. Uh, we want you to know that there's going to come a time for participation toward the end of our service, and I'll, and I'll give you some instruction for how you can participate online with everything that's going on here in our room as well. 
Uh, but to everyone here, good morning. Thank you for being here. We are in a series on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I have a lot this morning. Uh, so I have to go through my announcements very quickly, and that doesn't mean they're not important. So here they are. Uh, number one, we've got a prayer vigil coming up. It's a big deal. A church that prays is a church that has power in it. If we give up prayer, we give up that power. Uh, so I want to challenge you to pray. It's for 24 hours. We have a prayer guide. Sign up. All of that stuff will be coming to you digitally. Please re sign up to receive our emails. Those emails are important. They matter. Uh, and they clue you in on how to participate. Number two, we have giving statements in the Welcome Center right out those doors. Please pick those up. That'll actually save us a little bit on postage. Uh, you will get them no matter what, but if we save a little on postage, that would be a blessing. And our third and final, uh, I want to invite you to join us next week. Uh, it, it will be our new worship leader, Isaac's first Sunday next week. So we want you to come and to be here and to help us welcome him here. I want to see attendance through the roof, uh, and just to participate and to love this young man as he comes to lead all of us. It's going to be great. Uh, we have a lot of Bible ahead of us. You're going to need one. Um, uh, you, you can use a digital one, that's fine, but a paper Bible is really great as well. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, a, a brief overview of where we're going, um, and just know that I wanted to do so much more, and I have a great team here uh, that really helped this week, and I cannot express my gratitude to them enough. Uh, you should start in Exodus 15, then we're going to go to Exodus 16, Exodus 17, Numbers 20, Deuteronomy 8, Matthew 4, John 6, and I might even talk about James, and I'm not kidding, we got a lot to do today. Um, yeah, somebody just said, wow, you know, you can be praying for me. Exodus 15, um, before we start, I have to set some things up. Uh, number one, we're doing Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. And it has very little to do with food. Very little to do with food. Uh, number two, uh, I want some images in your mind ahead. I want you to think of Jesus on the cross. I want you to think of the wood of that cross, the striking of our Savior, and that now we speak to him and we receive that grace and healing. It's a beautiful thing. That's the image I want on your mind. And, and then finally, if you would begin to think of a broken bone, right, and the process that it takes to heal a broken bone, right, that when you break it, you go to the doctor, they set it, they put it in place, they often cast it, and then what does it take? It takes time, time, and that's when the limb is healed, okay? We're going to cover that in detail, uh, but join me. We've got a lot, and I'll guide you through it as we go. Exodus 15, beginning in verse 22. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why they called the place Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Brief aside, that, that phrase there, I am the Lord who heals you, that is Yahweh Rapha. Rapha, the Hebrew word to heal, it means so much more than to just to heal an injury or a sickness. It has something to do uh, with the healing internally and the healing externally. That's just an exhaust fan. No need to worry. <laughs> Exodus 16. Well, at least I hope there's no need to worry. Exodus 16. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt... In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. 
but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Let's jump to verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites said it, saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Jump to Exodus 17, verse 5. The Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this at the sight of the elders of Israel. Go ahead and jump to Numbers 20. In the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed at Kadesh. There, Miriam died and was buried. Now there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, If only, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this desert that we, should, uh, we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went to the assembly went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. Now, beloved, notice those words. Speak to that rock. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. These were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord and where he showed himself holy among them. Deuteronomy 8, 3. If you want to just head to John, you can go for it. He humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Now Matthew 4.4, 4, we're going to touch it briefly. It's very similar to what we just read. It's Jesus in the midst of his temptation. And what does he answer, Satan? It is written... Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Finally, John 6, beginning in verse 25 and going till I decide to stop. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, 
but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this scripture. Lord, it strikes me that uh, we have in the, the Old Testament, in Exodus, thousands of years before Jesus, we have things that are so shockingly similar to what Jesus is preaching about and teaching about. I pray that you would connect these uh, in our mind uh, intellectually, but more importantly, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would begin to descend on this room, that we as a congregation would begin to move and lean into what you have given us to do today, which is turn to the God that heals In your name, amen. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for that. That was uh, a good chunk of time to be reading Scripture. I hope it was powerful for you. I do want to challenge you to go back and read Exodus 15, 22 on, 16, 17 through the water, Numbers 20, all of that. Everything you need to know is in there. But let's talk today about daily bread. And I'm going to make a weird claim, right? One that actually goes against some things I've said before, but I think it matters. God does not care what you eat for dinner tonight. He does not care that I declared Sunday steak day. You can have steak, you can not have steak. It doesn't matter. In fact, I don't even know if God is concerned with your three square meals a day. If you're an intermittent faster and you eat one meal a day, congratulations, God's okay with that. Why does God's provision matter? What's it pointing to? Why does Jesus say, uh, I am the bread of life. Those who believe in me will neither hunger, and those who have faith, well, they, they, they'll, they'll never thirst. Why do these things matter? When we think about give us this day our daily bread, what are we actually praying for? Are we just praying for food? In fact, uh, it all, in my opinion, comes to that very first section of Exodus 15, 23 to, what was it, 26? At the end of 26, what does the Lord say? He says, I am Yahweh Rapha. I am the God who heals. This healing is inter intricately connected to God's provision. Now, I have to stop for a second because there is a difference between healing and forgiveness. And actually, they're part and parcel to following Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you will receive forgiveness from sin. 
But there's another side of that coin that has to do with healing. Healing, beloved. And we don't talk about this a lot or enough. Let me give you an example. Let's go back to the broken bone. Right, when the doctor sets it, he typically will do something like, or she will do something like, hey, it's all ready, it's good, leave it alone, stay off of it for four to eight weeks. And I think to myself, is it on day 29 that it could be healed? What about day 51? I mean, four to eight weeks is a long span, right? That's between 28 days and 56 days. Can they not give me a better number? Anybody who's undergone cancer treatment knows exactly what I'm talking about. Where they'll go, hey, let's do the first round of treatment, and then we'll scan you again and see how many more we need to go. And you find yourself thinking, is there not a more definitive answer? What we know is that healing takes time. You know why the Israelites end up in the desert? You know, the plan wasn't originally for them to spend 40 years wandering. It was actually their rebellion, their sin, that caused God to keep them there for 40 years. A whole generation spends their time in the desert. Why? Why? We have to ask these questions. What actually, it it tells us. They grumbled grumbled, and it cost them 40 years. They grumbled, why aren't we back in Egypt? This always makes me laugh, like from a, a, like a, a, a crazy, like maybe they've got Stockholm Syndrome, I don't know. But like, to think, you've watched God bring all of the plagues. You've watched God darken the sky. You've watched God part the seas. You fled through it. You've got the God of the universe on your side. And your very first complaint is, we don't have any water. How dumb does that sound? Moreover, eventually they've got the very presence of God around them. They've got God with them during the day, with them during the night, feeding them. And they still grumble. They still make idols. Because healing takes time. You see, they grumble. Let's talk about grumbling for a second. Grumbling is something that happens a lot. It's like the sin we just ignore. Right? I mean, just think of the last, like, three years in churches. Right? I mean, how many people just started grumbling? Ah, they closed the doors. Ah, They're not fully online. Ah! Masks, no masks. Ah! You know, it's funny. When Paul lists sins, right, he's giving us a qualitative list of severity, right? We all know that the punishment for sin is the same. You lie, you kill, it both ends in death. However, let me ask you a question. Let Let me just prove to you that severity actually is real. We don't like to talk about this in the modern church, but the severity, like, wh- what would you rather spend an afternoon with? A serial liar or a serial killer? We have a preference, right? We don't want to, I'm not spending my afternoon with a serial killer, hopefully. You know where grumbling ranks? Sexual perversion Grumbling. Qualitative list. Paul is saying, you cheating on your spouse is the same as you grumbling about your church, about your leaders, about your work, your family, your life. Grumbling is a sin, and it's a big one. In fact, it's one that we ignore. I said it a second ago, and we kind of chuckled. It's one we ignore because we love to grumble together. You know what's funny? Whenever you get like letters in the church, it's always signed by a few people. Misery loves company. You know what we don't? We don't like cheery people. 
You know, they're a breath of fresh air once, but have you ever worked with somebody who's overwhelmingly positive all the time? They have nothing bad to say about anything. It's like, oh, gosh. You know, okay, so when you're, when you're not the, like, you know, I'm the lead pastor here. It's great. It's a ton of fun. I love my job. I miss, to a degree, being the number three guy, because that's what I was uh, at, at my last church. Because when you're the number three guy, you get invited to the meeting after the meeting. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you get together, you get in the room with everybody else, and you're like, oh, here we go again. That guy, what a meeting that was. Can you believe what he said? And so those don't either, they don't happen here or I'm not invited. (laughs) I'm not sure which. (laughs) But we grumble about everything. You know what this story is about, this, this, this manna from heaven? You know, it, it strikes me. I am the God who heals. And then the rest of Exodus, Deuteronomy, number, I mean, all the way leading up to when they cross that Jordan. Do you know what all that time's about? Healing that grumbling. And it took 40 years. And you know what strikes me is that God provided daily for them in order to heal them. He brought them through that desert to heal them. He brought them through that time to heal them. He did not leave them where they were. He brought them to where they were going. And in order to get it there, he knew like a broken bone, it would take time. And so here's where the rubber hits the road for each of us. You are provided for so that you have time to heal. To heal. Now let that begin to percolate in your heart and let's talk about another pattern that emerges here, right? And I love this. I want you to to, to, to hear this. Let's look at the water, right? Because Jesus said, he who believes in me will never hunger. He who trusts in me will never thirst, right? That's that's what he says in John 6, hunger and thirst. That's why we looked at both the water and the food because it's, it's interesting. We've got two sides of a coin beginning to develop here, hunger and thirst. Now we've got water and food. And the water discourses, What's the first thing Moses does? He throws in wood. What's the second thing Moses does? He strikes the rock. Interesting, right? That it's a rock that he strikes. What's Jesus referred to as often? Interesting, 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 right? What's the third thing that he's supposed to do but doesn't? Speaks. Speak to the rock. Wood. Strike. Speak. I just want you to reflect on this. I I just find this to be too beautiful to ignore. Uh, Here we are in Exodus, how many years before Jesus, and the model of our salvation is clearly and beautifully articulated. That a piece of wood would bear with it all that was necessary to remove sin. That our Savior would be struck, the rock would be struck and that our access to water now, now water in the Bible is always synonymous with life, always, always, always. Our access to water now has to do with our ability to speak with him. And Moses' big fail was the fact that he struck it again rather than speak. Now, beloved, you don't need to strike your Savior down. He already did that. What you do need to do is call out to him and speak to him. And so that's what we're doing today. Now, I have to be careful because I'm not talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about healing. You want forgiveness? That's next week with Betsy Rumor. She's going to be great. But today is healing. Now, he took care of it on the cross. He was struck down for us. And now we speak to him. And this is going to control the tone and the tenor for where we are going. Go ahead and go back to John 6. John 6, 35. And remember our warnings. Man does not live on bread alone. I am the God who heals. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. 
all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. There's two parts of that will. There is healing and there is forgiveness. Now Jesus is moving towards forgiveness even at the beginning of John. But throughout all of his ministry, what is his, his earthly ministry focused on? Healing and time spent with people. Now today, we're going to give you an opportunity to look for and ask for healing. And you might be thinking, what kind of church am I in? Well, you're in a Presbyterian one. Actually, that's why we're going to do what we're doing. Did you know in James, it says to, uh, that for any, whenever anybody is sick, that they should call upon the elders and the leaders of the church, and those people should pray over them for healing. That's actually what we're going to provide today. But here's why. is because our daily bread has to do with God caring for us until we're healed. Not your three square meals. Not Sunday steak day. It is about your healing. And beloved, we do not go to Jesus for healing enough, and we need to, and we know it. And I'm gonna offer you three categories today in which you can receive healing in because you need it, I need it. Number one, healing of the heart. Anger. Greed. Perversion. Jealousy, grumbling. Those things that cause us to turn back to the bottom of that bottle. Those things that cause us to go outside the boundaries of marriage or purity. Those things that cause us to, to want in the material because we're scared. Scared to not have enough. Those things in our heart that keep us from God. Maybe, just maybe, God has provided for you every day of your life to bring you to heal, to start a healing process. Have you ever wondered if you're fed to arrive at this moment? I always think of the people who find Jesus later in life, right, in their 90s. And I, and you know, I, I had some friends that used to like want to be that guy because they wanted to sneak in at the end. And I always think to myself, why? But think about it. God provided for them every day in their rebellion to arrive at their salvation. He cared for them until they were ready. God cares for you until you are ready, beloved, to receive healing. Category number two, area number two that you can ask for healing in. You can ask for healing in your relationships. Let's talk about this. There is both forgiveness and healing in relationships, right? Somebody can do something to you that you forgive, but it hurts. It hurts. So we break it off. So we refuse. This happens between parents and kids, brothers and sisters, co-workers, husbands and wives. Have you asked for healing? The third, and the third is the one we go to the most often. We ask for healing of our ailments. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed for cancer and how many times cancer still happens. You know, I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be overly promising of anything, but God can heal cancer. And God can heal asthma. And God can heal broken bones. And God can heal paralyzed people. And God can heal people with hemophilia. And God can uh, heal. And he doesn't always. Why? Because God has numbered our days. And sometimes cancer wins because that's how God calls us home. But sometimes, sometimes God heals because it brings God glory. And because it gives Jesus a chance to move and Jesus a chance to work. And so we want to give you an opportunity to ask for healing, not just over big things, but over anything. If you've got an achy joint, let's bring it to Jesus. 
you've got a cough, let's bring it to Jesus. If you have asthma, if you have cancer, whatever it is, let's bring it to Jesus. Because if we never come forward in faith, maybe we never get the chance to be healed. And we don't want you to be healed for your sake. We want you to be healed for the sake that it presents to the Lord. We don't look for healing And God provides for us every day so that we have the opportunity to be healed. He gives us the time to minister to our spirit. And so today's that day. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you the chance. I'm going to ask our elders to stand and, and, and our staff that have been picked to stand. Because these people are ready to pray with you for anything. They want to connect. They want to pray. And there is no limit to what they will pray over you for, and it will be between you and them and the Lord. And we will walk alongside you in love through everything. So as God provided for you today to arrive at this moment, where church is not just sitting in a pew and listening to people or listening to music, but actually acting on what the Holy Spirit is doing in you and through you in this morning, that we would have the blessing to pray with you and over you in the name of the Holy Spirit that you would be healed. And maybe, just maybe, it will happen. And anger can begin to abate. And greed can begin to turn to generosity and perversion into purity. Maybe broken relationships can be reconciled. Maybe sisters can be united, marriages restored. Maybe cancer can be cured. I don't know, and I'm not in control. If it were, if I were, you'd all be great. But we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to move for his sake and for his glory and for his kingdom and maybe, just maybe, for your benefit. But him first, us second. Beloved, let me pray over you, and I want to challenge you. Be bold in what you bring to the Lord. Go to one of these people standing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that in this moment you come. Holy Spirit, fill these people. Give them a boldness. Allow us to move. Allow us to trust that you are the God that heals. Yahweh Rapha, we call on you. That you would move into this space. That you would be in our hearts. That you would be in our relationships. That you would be the God over our bodies and over sickness. And that right now we could come to you in your name and ask for it and receive. So embolden these people and provide for them, not just now, but so that they can arrive at these moments of healing, so that they can arrive at these moments of grace. And so now we turn to you. Work, Lord, for your glory. Amen.
I want you to know that the work is going on does not need to stop, nor are we finished. Congratulations. We own the property. We're here all day. <laughs> we love you. We're not done praying. And I am, if you have yet to move, we will be here and be ready to pray for you. We understand the, 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 the pressure that we put on you. And know this. Anytime you turn to the Lord, he turns toward you. And if you are praying here and now for something... The Lord hears it. We love you. We love you as you are. I, I pray that the Lord's face, his countenance, it shines upon you, that you go from here filled with the love and joy and unity of the Spirit. If you want to pray, we'll be here all day. Go in peace. Go with the Lord.